Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and uh, today I'm in the workshop. I'm uh, doing a little bit of work with the new Crossfire Pro. Uh, I have had some settings issues with uh, adjusting the, uh, the the inches per minute in my G-code and uh, the, the PSI on the machine. I've gone back and forth with Langmuir a little bit about uh, some of those settings. And uh, I think I've, I've gotten some pretty decent uh, cuts out of this machine. And I started making the platen bracket uh, pieces and put them up on the website uh, for sale. I'm only doing small runs as of right now. So if you do order one, uh, it, takes a, it takes a few days for me to get to it and ship it out. But if you're interested in supporting my work here on the channel, um, you know, you can go out there and buy one. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're cut here, so they're, they're not laser cut. They're a little bit less uh, straight as far as the quality goes and the cut itself. Uh, and eventually, I will have those uh, files sent over to uh, my laser cutter in Dallas, and then I'll just uh, have that uh, handled over there and have them cut a whole sheet of them and stuff. Uh, I've already sold quite a few just by posting on Facebook and so on, so that's been kind of nice. Uh, just to get me uh, motivated to learn sheet cam and understand how nesting works and also um, taking the step of uh, looking at uh, design for manufacturability, which uh, is one of those things that um, you know sometimes we don't think about in the design process. So because I'm the creator, designer, and ultimately the manufacturer, I can solve all those problems uh, before they go out to the actual manufacturer and the, the guy that actually does the work, cutting it all out and all that, uh, it, it makes sense ultimately. I get the, the best uh, bang for my buck, as they say. But uh, playing around with the, the plasma cutter, uh, I've got one small issue. I've been going back and forth with uh, the forums, the support forums, and I think it's the dross issue. It's, it's, I'm, I'm getting a lot of dross on the back end of these parts, and because they're so small, uh, it's a real huge pain in the butt to to actually remove that dross. And, and I don't want to have to do it. And I've seen other people on those forums actually get really decent cuts with um, thick steel with the Razor Weld 45 and the Crossfire Pro table. So I um, arguably want to uh, create uh, the right settings and the right G code so that every time I go to pump something out, even if it's just a prototype, I'm not actually out there banging the dross off the back of the piece or grinding it down. I just want it to cut and be as clean as possible. So uh, I'm going to take apart the uh, Razor Weld 45, which is the plasma torch itself, the cutter, the, uh, the piece that uh, sends the electricity to the torch. And I'm going to adjust the internal uh, regulator to allow a little bit more PSI. When they come from Razor Weld, they don't have... A, uh, an outside adjuster for the PSI. It's just kind of set to 65 or 70 PSI right from the factory. And without opening up the case and uh, adjusting that, uh, you, you can't get any more PSI. Now, I have an HTP air drying system on the outside of the Crossfire Pro table that dries the air on the way in. And that has a regulator on it. So I'm able to adjust that regulator and allow for the correct PSI. However, some of the steel I'm cutting is so thick that it requires a higher PSI than 70 PSI. Uh, right now, I'm restricted. I can't do that. There's a governor on that, so I can't get in there. So uh, it is possible to adjust it. It's just a little bit of a headache to do so. And I understand why the manufacturer does that. It makes sense. Uh, they don't want you uh, put, putting too much air through and blowing out the torch. But in my case, uh, I think it's um, if I adjust it just slightly up, maybe say 80, 85, maybe even 90 PSI, I can dial it back as needed on the dryer itself. I also set up this uh, water bin here. It's got a little fountain pump in it and uh, some valves and a filter in there. And what it does is it pumps the water that's in this bin up through the drain holes. And then when I'm done filling it, I just turn these two valves here and it keeps it from draining. When I'm done with the table, open those two valves up and uh, the one ball valve down there with the blue handle and it drains back down into the bin. Uh, there's just enough water in here to fill the table. So once the, the fill is done, I'll hear the pump sort of struggling to pick things up and like that. And uh, yeah, system works pretty good after I adjusted the uh, PSI 
I moved all the electronics up onto the shelf where they belong. And I bought some anti-spatter for the nozzle. Now, I didn't realize this, but this nozzle here, uh, which comes with the Razor Weld 45, uh, it's not supposed to look like this. There's supposed to be a shield here. Uh, I didn't get the shield from Langmuir when they shipped it to me. Uh, I emailed their support. They're sending me one out. So uh, unfortunately, though, I melted a little bit of this cup here. I, I found one on eBay that I'll be able to, uh, to replace it with. But yeah, it was a little bit... Uh, I was reading the instructions. I'm like, where's the machine shield? I don't have that. Look through the box. Nothing in the box. So, uh, yeah, I fried a couple of consumables because of it and melted the cup, but nothing that can't be replaced. Also, I wanted to uh, just uh, share with you a little bit about the journey I'm taking with the Makery Network. Uh, if you haven't already seen my social posts about the podcast, uh, there will be links down in the description where you'll be able to find uh, the first episode, possibly the second, depending on when this video comes out. Uh, there, we have started a podcast with Craig Lockwood uh, from the Knife Talk podcast, which is a wildly successful podcast. There's a bunch of other guys who are uh, content creators who have joined on with uh, Craig on the Makery Network, which is what he has built to sort of uh, clump a bunch of makers together who weren't doing podcasts, or maybe they were and they, and they need a little bit more focus, kind of rein us in. and. That way, you as a viewer can go on there and uh, click onto his website, which is makery.network, and you can find content that's all kind of similar, made by people who are doing uh, decent production work, and then you know also makers and creators, designers, guys like me and uh, uh, Jeremy from Simple Little Life, uh, the guys over at uh, Make Everything, uh, Chan the Make uh, Everything Channel. Um, Gosh, who else is on there? There's, there's, there's quite a few. Uh, Jeff Fader from Fader Knives, uh, he, uh, he's also a part of it. So we've all kind of come together and created this little uh, consortium of ideas, and then we all split off and created our own little channel. Mine is called Work For It, and uh, I am not really setting a focus, like a dialed-in focus, really for the podcast just yet. I am kind of feeling it out as far as how this is working. I do have a co-host, his name is Trent Hill. He has contributed numerous times in the comment section of a bunch of my videos. And he has really uh, stepped up and said, hey, I'd love to be on your show. And he contributes quite a bit and it makes uh, the show really great. I, I don't feel like I can just, like I do here on YouTube, I feel like I can talk at a camera for a while, but uh, these shows are about an hour long. So, you know, I do 10 minute pieces here on YouTube, which is quite a bit easier and there's a visual component to it. So I feel like um, the conversations we're having, the way that they're going is that uh, we're focusing on the work we do, you know, building a small business based around content, based around uh, making things, uh, not just knife making, not just CNC, not just uh, grinders and all that, but it kind of uh, encapsulates all of those concepts. Do it yourself, uh, building a life for yourself, building a business, what that looks like, and then going in granular a little bit to each one of those subjects and adding a, uh, a, a component of it where I bring you guys into the studio with me. Uh, numerous people have reached out uh, from the last video or a couple videos back where I said, hey, I need somebody to come on the show with me. Uh, Trent stepped up and I really like him to be a co-host with me on a regular basis. But the, uh, the other piece is I'd love to interview you guys. So if you're a maker and you're doing stuff and you want to uh, join in on our podcast, send me an email, brian at housework.us. I would love to chat with you about your focus, see what you're doing, see what you're up to, and see if it's a good fit for the show. And if it is, uh, then we'll have you on and we'll, we'll talk about what you're up to because um, ultimately we're better when we collaborate, right? So uh, that's, that's one other good piece of info for you. Please check out the Housework Podcast. As of right now, I know it's up on Apple Podcasts. And it's up on Spotify and obviously the Makery Network website. And I'll put links down below so you can find all of that and uh, get, get involved with that. Uh, the, the last thing I want to talk about is a project that um, is still in the early phases of development, but it's something I'm very excited about. Uh, in the Facebook forum, somebody posted a photo of a 
buffer grinder attachment for the 2x72 belt grinder. Very simple contraption, uh, pillow block bearings that uh, hold a, a shaft and spin uh, basically a, a drive wheel on that shaft and then it spins and uh, allows you to attach, the, it allows you to attach itself basically to the 2x72 belt grinder. So I was inspired by that and here's a couple reasons why. I've always wanted a buffing wheel, a big one. You know, like some of these guys, the guitar buffers, I don't know if you've watched any of these videos on YouTube, but there's these guys out there that big build these huge 12-inch uh, uh, wheel buffers, um, and they've been made forever. Um, there's, a, there's a name for them. I don't know what the name is. But anyway, they, uh, they create these on their own, plus there's guys that go out and buy them, old school ones, and then restore them which I think is cool. My buddy, uh, Mike LaValle, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll link to his Instagram so you can go out and find him. If you dig into his feed uh, a few months ago, he actually went out and bought one and then uh, restored it and it's really cool. It's an amazing piece of equipment, but it's huge and it takes up a ton of space in his garage and workshop. Uh, so I was thinking, what if we had that same functionality, a nice big 10 inch polishing wheel or multiple polishing wheels that would attach to a shaft that would ultimately fit on a tooling arm that would nest into the Revolution 2x72. Uh, it would be very inexpensive to build for the most part. You've got uh, basically the plate steel to hold it up, the tooling arm, uh, the, the shaft, which is really inexpensive. I got that at Home Depot. Uh, I don't know, it was like 12 bucks or 15 bucks, something like that. Some nuts, bolts, washers, and then obviously the pads that go on there, the pillow block bearings. I know it sounds very complicated, it's really not. It's a very easy system to build. I would say you could probably do it for under $100. And uh, so I am like excited about this, right? So late last night, I sat down in Fusion and I drew up a couple of plates. I drew up a pillow block bearing just to see if I could do a very rudimentary one and just to see, okay, what does this look like if I assemble this thing and make it, uh, you know, can we cut it out on the, on the Crossfire Pro, the, the pieces that are needed, and then what's the fabrication look like? Well, it's kind of a walk in the park, it's not too bad. I did go ahead and order everything. I got the axle, I've got the uh, nuts and bolts, I got some of the polishing pads already in, I bought all that stuff on Amazon for the most part, and then I'm waiting on a drive wheel and a couple other things. So once that comes in, uh, it should be like a one day build. And I'm hoping it goes well. I think it will. So that leads me to the next thing. I always love it when you guys contribute to my designs. You make them better. And if you see anything wrong with this design, I would really like it if you uh, took a look at it for me and just uh, gave me your, your two cents down in the comments section. Go ahead and tell me what you think. Um, I, know, I know that uh, a lot of you may have ideas, but don't chime in because you feel like maybe they're dumb or they don't match up or whatever. I read and respond to almost all of those comments as long as they're productive. And even if it's a minor adjustment, it makes a huge difference. I was, I was telling Trent this on the podcast about the little spacers that go between the, the tensioning or the, uh, the pillars, the risers that hold up the, the grinder head uh, and, it, and it threads through the axle. Those little 0 .030 bushing washer things that sit in between that and the uh, hinges. Uh, that was an idea from one of you, and I would have never done that. I probably would have just left it as is, and then later on in the assembly, I would ha I'd wonder why I had uh, you know alignment issues or why there wasn't enough space later on once the welds cooled. The, the machine probably wouldn't turn as well. So uh, you make my designs better, and I really want you to know that I, I do appreciate it. So don't hold back. You can always write in and tell me what you're thinking. So that's the weekly update, guys. I hope to have the uh, drive wheel in by early next week, I would think, uh, and we'll be able to get the buffer sort of uh, handled and built and then run that as a test. I'm excited for that because I don't. I have a small buffing wheel. It's very tiny. It's like a six inch or an eight inch or something, but it doesn't work real well. It's just a cheap uh, Ryobi belt grinder or a, a bench grinder. It just doesn't work that great. It'll do what it needs to do, but I've always wanted one of these big beefy ones. So anyhow, guys, if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's numerous ways to support my channel and uh, by far the best way is to go to my website, housemade.us. You can buy sticker packs, pieces, parts for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. 
Uh, we now sell to Europe, so if you're in the European Union and you'd like to build our grinder, we have awesome kits that are uh, a little bit more whole than the kits that we have in the U.S. Uh, go to uh, housemade.us, and if you click at the very top, it says ships to Europe. You can find all of that. There's Patreon. There's buy me a coffee. Uh, you can support what I do here in this studio and workshop. It, uh, it really does mean a lot, and I would truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.